Dick? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We will uh, call this meeting to order now that we've got Dick on the line. Dick, how are you doing in Pierre? What's that? <laughs> uh, how are you doing in Pierre? Well, I'm a little warmer than yesterday. Well. Winds died down. All right. Well, can you hear us all right? I want to be sure that we've got good dialogue. Well, yeah, it could be better, but okay. Okay. like we they always tell me, speak into the microphone. <laughs> Well, I'm chewing on it here. I don't know how much closer I can get. We can hear you very well, though. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I think the first thing we'll do, as we normally do, is just uh, uh, review the minutes and seek approval. I move approval. Second. We've got a uh, movement and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Carries. Um, next, public input. I don't see many people here. Dick, you might not be surprised to learn there aren't many people here, but uh, any public input? Hearing none, we'll proceed into old business. Um, further discussion and possible vote on proposal uh, from Mary Glensky regarding uh, Charter Section 6.02. I'd ask the commission if there's any discussion uh, in regards to that, and if if there is none, uh, we, I would I would ask that we proceed to vote on that. I just have a question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, this is the this is the form that we've discussed in I think the latest version, and the, the only, as I recall, one of the last things we talked about was living within the district, right. and that we've got down to moving out of the district in 30 days of their appointment. Uh, is the I think the, the last at least one of the last changes, right? So with that, I move approval. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Uh, go ahead and move to vote on that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, moving right on down the list, old business, further discussion and possible vote on proposed uh, on the proposal regarding Charter 6.03. We've got some uh, information on this from uh, Deb Owen. And uh, Deb, if you've, if you've got something you'd like to address regarding this, we welcome you to the mic. Deborah Owen, Deborah Owen, City Clerk. As you know, we've had um, discussions about this, and I think there was a concern raised by Sean Turneau last time that perhaps um, just the phrase "except as amended by ordinance" might be too uh, general, and uh, at least that's what I took away from our conversation. So I wondered if you were more specific and actually talked about the reason why we're actually uh, wanting to be able to bring uh, forward some deadlines for ballot question, or ballot question issues and ordinance. And so the revision would say, except as provided in 6.03, subsection A of this section, the provisions of the election law of the state of South Dakota, as they currently exist or may hereafter be amended or superseded, shall govern the exercise of the powers of initiative and referendum under this charter, and then subsection A would read, the city council shall provide filing deadlines for ballot questions in ordinance. Dick, were you able to hear all that? Ms. No. But go ahead. Would it be possible okay. for you to come oh, let me, closer to the okay. phone maybe? So, I mean, I really think it's important that he is able to hear this. Were those microphones working? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think Mr. Gregerson? Yes. This is Deborah. I'm going to read. Um, I had a for different revision uh, that I wanted you to consider today. Okay. So, I can hear you good now. Okay, great. <laughs> Let me read it to you. Uh, it is on uh, Granicus Online. You can look at it there as well if you have that pulled up on your, on your laptop. But it would be to uh, add more definition to the reason for, um, for the amendment itself. Uh, and it would say, except as provided in 6.03, subsection A of this section, the provisions of the election law of the state of South Dakota as they currently exist or may hereafter be amended or superseded 
shall govern the exercise of the powers of initiative and referendum under this charter. And then subsection A would say, and it's the new section, the City Council shall provide filing deadlines for ballot questions in ordinance. That's it. Okay, very good. Any other uh, questions from the commission in regards to uh, Ms. Owen's proposal or Mr. Torno? Any comment? <clears throat> well, I would just say this is the first uh, the city attorney's office has seen this provision. I'm just trying to uh, think it through a little bit. Um, initially, a concern I have, I guess, is doesn't define what kind of ballot questions. Um, I think it's inferred that it would be local election ballot questions, but it doesn't say that. So I, you know, I, I guess I'd, uh, I'd like the opportunity to at least uh, look at this and compare it with uh, some different provisions of state law before I would be able to um, give the office opinion one way or the other on that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, yes. Ms. Owen, I, I have a couple questions. I, I think they kind of tracked with what uh, Mr. Torner was saying, but when we're talking about initiative and referendum, right? Correct, but also in the city charter, there's a provision where citizens can bring forward a charter amendment as well, similar to a constitutional amendment for statewide elections, and so I wanted to include that as well. Is there any other way to bring forth a charter amendment other than the by this commission or by citizens? Uh, the council and the, and the uh, uh, citizens and then the Charter Revision Commission. There okay. are three ways provided in Charter that the city charter may be amended. And when it's brought forward by the city council, um, where does it, does it go to the vote of the people then? Yes, actually uh, bringing forth an amendment by all, all of those three entities, if you will, uh, just simply puts it on the ballot mm -hmm. for the people to decide. I'm just going to give you a hypothetical. Could the city council come forward with an amendment to the charter and with this language set up an election to vote on that at some particular time or would it be set in law as the way it is today that it would be voted on later? Um, good question. And I, if I think, uh, let me see if I, I, are you asking if the city council could call a special election or? Mm -hmm. Uh, the governing body always has the ability to call a special election, uh, and that's provided in state law. Uh, and they did so. Recent uh, examples would be the Drake Springs Pool, that we did not have a regular city election because that date is set in charter. Uh, in an earlier provision in this, in 6.01a actually is where that provision lies. Um, and so we have our regular city election is set by charter. The runoff is set by ordinance. And, um, and then we have the general election, which, of course, is, is state law. And um, specials are found, um, that provision is found in Title IX of SDCLs, and that is the governing body can choose to expedite an election if they so desire. And I guess Drake Springs Pool and the Rec Center vote are two examples when they can choose to do that, um, mm -hmm. of recent examples. Whether the council, the council can't amend the charter in certain provisions. There are some prohibitions in, in charter that would um, prohibit council from amending certain portions of it, obviously to, you know, expand their powers or to, to, um, to squelch the mayor's power. Those are prohibitions in charter. And they are stated um, that they can't amend the charter under Oh, it's probably a handful, maybe seven provisions of the charter itself. Thank you. I should also point, if the council, oh, thank you, whoever turned the microphone on. If the council uh, 
chooses to amend the charter by ordinance, there are public hearings on that, just like any ordinance would be. So you would have a first reading and a second reading, um, and then it would be um, then it would then go on the ballot. So there would be probably unlike the the citizens who put it on the ballot, there would be additional public hearings required by law for the council. The the purpose to this language and, and what you're trying to achieve here is just an administrative framework so that there's a clear understanding as to when uh, when procedures and protocols need to be right. adhered to and, and so that there's just a, a framework in place as it's just kind of bag now. Right, and I can give you an example. As we have candidates who are running for office for the 2010 election in April, we have a deadline for those petitions, those filing deadlines. Uh, it will be the last Friday in February that they have to bring in their required number of signatures. And, and likewise, we'd like to have a deadline so um, that we have a fixed point in time for administering elections in an orderly fashion by saying the petitions need to be in, our, in the clerk's office by a set point in time. That's all. Obviously, uh, I should go back to specials. Um, the deadline, you know, we can't really put a deadline on a special because the, count, because the governing body always has a prerogative to call it uh, when, when they desire to. But uh, certainly for regular elections, um, it would be helpful to administer the elections. To get to Sean's point, does it make sense in um, subsection A to um, spell out that it would be for city, city elections, city ordinances? Pardon me, Deborah, again for city clerk's office. Um, if you could call that, if you could denote that as being a regular city election, uh, that would be consistent with a charter. We, we denote that in 6.01A of the regular city election. That is a date that's fixed in time by charter, and uh, that would be the election that I'd be looking to try to put this, put a deadline or a filing deadline in. So, in theory, it could read, the city council shall provide filing deadlines for regular city elections for ballot questions in ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I, my opinion would be that um, since this comes to us at this date, I, that we, uh, we do have another meeting set up that we digest this before we take any action. That would be my personal opinion. How does the rest of the commission feel? Well, the city attorney's office is really in charge of this commission, and if there's question from the city attorney's office, I think it would be wise to uh, wait, as Mr. Early suggested. Okay. We will uh, table this until our next meeting um, and uh, take a vote up on that. At that point, uh, Mr. Torno, you'll have a, an opinion to us for that yes. in time for that? Yes. Great. Uh, moving along then, further discussion and possible vote on proposal from uh, Commission Member Early to include English being deemed a common language for the city. This is uh, newly proposed to Section 1.06. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, I, I would uh, request that that be removed from the agenda at oh. this time. Right. Uh, hearing no arguments to that, we will go ahead and remove that from, from the agenda. Under old business sub D, any additional interest by commission to revisit um, for potential revisions? One suggestion is 5.04 as it relates to budget. And I wasn't sure what this was referring to. I don't know, I don't know either. This must go way back. Huh? <clears throat> this goes back uh, to discussions prior to the 
this commission putting the last several pro provisions on the ballot. One of the last ones to be discussed was Section 504 and the the semi-conflict, if you, you will, within the sort of uh, prefatory language uh, under 504 about the budget, that the budget shall be in the form of uh, as the mayor deems desirable or as the city council may require. And that sort of conflict is you know, what if um, the council required it one way, the mayor wanted it another way, and you know, I think there was a, a fair amount of discussion last time that this should be looked at, but it should be looked at by the, the next commission at the, at the uh, uh, end of um, the discussions last time before putting items on the ballot. It was, it was decided, in essence, as I look back at the minutes, to sort of table this issue and you could look at it again. Um, and it, if you recall, Gene Rowanhorst, I think, provided uh, a fair amount of testimony on that, that uh, the finance office would want, you know, specific direction that um, the budget be prepared as the mayor would want the budget prepared. Uh, the council has all the power to ask questions and inquire and um, to, to dig into that budget, but but that hopefully there wasn't this conflict in how, how is someone you know, down the line going to prepare the budget. So I just, as I looked through old minutes, I saw that issue and um, know that we're wrapping up, you know, we're coming within a few meetings here of being wrapped up this time. Thought maybe the uh, commission would, would want to at least consider revisiting that, or if not, so be it. Any thoughts from the commission? I appreciate Sean bringing that forward because as I recall it is sort of we did just sort of leave it and um, I think it is probably at least worthy of finding out how the Commission feels about delving into it again uh, mr. chairman the last I see I, I do it for some reason I was able to find my notes 11:15 um, <laughs> of 07 this was reviewed I, I think this was a this was a um, draft I think presented where we had underscores and was that the one presented by Gene Roanhorse? I, I believe so. I think so. We, we worked on a few different proposals and there was at least one council member that had concerns. It's not a council member any yeah. longer. But, right. Um, yeah, and, and I see the things that I, I noted here were uh, in, this is in 504, right? Talk Five, about. Right, 504. Okay. Um, and, and the, the additional language that was being put in here was the city council may require additional information or details from the city staff about the mayor's budget proposal. I, you know, that was one of them. And then down under sub two, it says proposed capital expenditures during the ensuing five fiscal years. We're going to insert five. There's none the ensuing fiscal years where it reads today. We're going yeah, to I believe, uh, Commissioner, earlier, I think those were actually handled. It was just that prefatory language. Oh, okay. Uh, how how is the budget going to be prepared? And that sentence that you read is, is exactly what my notes show, that the concern was what if, what if the mayor, you know, were to put it in such a form that the council just absolutely couldn't understand. And to, to address that concern, uh, the issue was the council can inquire all they want about those provisions. But uh, in the end, Again, when you look at the, the original uh, model charter, the, all the drafts have gone before. This clearly is a strong mayor form of government. Um, and when it comes to drafting a budget, that would normally be fall within the realm of the administration rather than mm -hmm. the council. Read that again, Bill. That Here, I just, and I don't know why I put leaves out, leave out city staff. I don't know why I put that, but that, that's the language right there that was new. I guess I still struggle that the language as it currently exists implies that the council can has the power to 
require from the mayor to have the budget a certain way. Right. That's the impression that it gives me the way it currently exists. And one of the things, as I, as I look at notes, um, and I'm not speaking for Gene Roanhorse, but I, I made notes when he last talked, and, and I remember this was a, a, a pretty good point, I thought, that the finance office prepares their budgets under GFOA standards, government financing, I'm not Procedures. sure. Procedures. Uh, that they do Policy. it under those standards, and that's how they're audited. It would be a concern to the finance department if you had a council requiring, no, don't use those standards. Uh, I run a private business, and I do my budgets this way. I want it, you know, if you had a strong council member that persuaded others, I want the budget prepared this way, but it doesn't have anything to do with government financing. Um, where would that put the finance department? <coughs> Ms. Owen? Um, thank you. Deborah Owen, City Clerk, if I could, I had to think back a ways to listen to your discussions. I think the council member who may have come forward might have been Bob Jamison, or was it Kevin Cavanaugh? Kevin Cavanaugh. I know uh, council member Bob Jamison also had a concern. Um, and, and I think the questions posed at the time, if I could remind, is that you know, earlier in that sentence, it says, except as required by law or this charter, and then it says, shall be in the form as the mayor deems appropriate or the city council may require. And the issue at the time this came forward was the city council adopted a resolution to require the mayor to bring a balanced budget where expenditures met um, revenues, estimates, and also that they would have required reserve levels maintained uh, month to month, and then at, at the year end uh, there would be a 25 percent, and month to month was 11 percent. And um, I don't know that we've ever come to conclusions about that, but when the council adopts policies such as requiring a balanced budget or requiring um, certain things in law, um, I guess the council had felt, at least my impression was, that they had the authority to do that collectively as a legislative body, requiring certain, uh, 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 putting certain laws in effect about how the city's budget was to be uh, maintained on a policy level, if you will. And I think that's probably similar to peer, but um, so I don't know how that would coincide with that, would, would that in effect um, take away the council's ability to require a balanced budget. I mean, that was the issue at the time, and I think that was the questions posed to the city attorney's office, and I don't know that there was an answer at the time because we deferred the subject. But I do know amongst council members who were here in serving uh, as elected officials, those were, that, was, that was clearly the issue that was um, on the radar screen back then. And, and I can say to the council's credit, they worked closely with Roanhorst on drafting that resolution for the balanced budget and worked on picking numbers that were the GFOA numbers at the time. Uh, you can find those minutes in their committee meetings for fiscal committee, but uh, worked with Rowan Horse to establish numbers that were sound and were reachable and also that were required uh, to be followed. From, uh, I, I guess, Mike, I, it seems sort of redundant, the sentence. I don't know. I, I would guess to me that the mayor, if the council wanted information, the mayor could, should provide it. I, you know, I don't know why we need to tell them to do that. That would be my feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we have two options. We can leave it as is. Somebody can... Um, move that, that we, uh, we consider language of some sort, or we can, again, put this on the table for our last meeting next week and either address or not address it at that point. Does Dick have any input to this, or is he not hearing us? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wondered the same thing, because I, I know he, uh, <laughs> Gregerson last time spoke quite a bit about this. Dick, are you there? I think we lost him. Uh oh. <laughs> Do we know? Um, he moved it down. Has Dick committed to being here? 
uh, next week at our, at our if we meet again next week? I'm not sure. When is the meeting next week? Tuesday, the second is yeah. where I remember. One thirty. Oh, there's a possibility, wasn't it? The second of February. I think it's a week from today. Yes. Are you available to meet with us on the second, February second? Uh, let me hold on. Let me take a look at my just a minute. And then ask him if he's hearing anything that yeah. we're saying. Yeah, if you heard the discussion, on ask this. him if he has any question about this five or four. Uh, yeah, I'd have to do it by phone again. This is not working very well. I really don't know uh, what's going on. I'm going to try to cut the volume way up, but you just can't hear anything. Did they were discussing Section 5.04. That's item D on your agenda. Uh huh. They were curious if you had any input with that. Is that the initiative? And you talking about? No. 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 Um, Which one is that? This is um, budget. Oh. Remind him it's that, that old issue that we talked about. I'm going to bring him up here. <laughs> yeah. Explain it to him, Pam. If you're close to the phone. D Hi, Dick. This is Pam. Dick? Yes. This is, we're talking about, this is an old issue that um, the city attorney's office um, brought up again. Um, we talked about it over a year ago uh, between the mayor's office and the council about what the mayor or what the council may yeah, require about the budget. Do you recall yeah. that discussion? Yes, I do. Okay. So, go ahead and so tell them what our options are here. Well, the uh, uh, it came back up as uh, Dick as far as uh, um, some some language, and obviously you don't have it in front of you, so. I think what we'll do, what the question at the table was, is we can uh, we can move on and leave the language as is. We can uh, one of the commissioners can uh, uh, move to change the language with the proposal, or we can table this to a labor uh, to our meeting that we have scheduled for a week from today, February second at 1:30. So then the question came up: Do you have? Uh, are you available? And if, if it's if your availability is only by phone again, we're going to have this the same challenge, which is less yeah. than convenient for anybody. The, the um, is Tuesday the only option? The, no, it's not the only option. Let us look a minute, Dick. When are you back? Yeah. When? Well, I tell you what, I could if I could. Uh, like, for instance, the legislature does not meet on that Friday, so I can come home on Thursday. Or if uh, if we could do it, you know, Monday morning. Uh, Are you talking about the 1st or the 8th? 1st to the 8th, uh, yeah. Or Monday on the 1st, uh, I could, you know, stay. And if we could do it first thing in the morning, then take off. So it would really help if um, it could either be on the first or the fifth or the uh, the eighth. I can't the eighth. I'll be out of time. What, uh, what's I our know what our deadline is here? Our deadline. Our deadline is the eighth. Okay. Oh, it's the eighth. Mm -hmm. What? Our deadline is the eighth, Dick. So we'd probably want to do it the week before, and I could make uh, Friday afternoon work. Or well, that would be morning. great if you could. I really, uh, I couldn't hear a thing. I, I, right. It's kind of irresponsible to. It's okay. You could food on anything right now. I just, I couldn't hear. It's okay. You could do the first line. I can do the morning of the first right away at. You want to do eight thirty? Eight thirty. Eight o'clock. If we do it on the first, I teach a class at nine on Mondays. I could Friday afternoon. The fifth would be better for me. Friday afternoon is better for me, but I could make the first work. Friday afternoon would actually be better for me, too, so there's our answer. Okay. Does that work for Friday you? Friday afternoon, the 5th. What time would you like? Maybe a little earlier, like, uh, like 1.30. 1.30? Yeah. That would be. Friday afternoon, February 5th at 1.30, Dick? That'd be fine. Okay. That'd be great. <laughs> and in the meantime, I can, you know, I can redraft up the language on 504. Um, so you have it to at least consider and 
do with it what you want on the fifth. All right. Well, then we'll go ahead and table uh, 6.03 and 5.04 until um, next Friday the 5th. When you say table, do you, do you want a proposal drafted up on 5.04? Yes. Okay. I'm using the wrong terminology. Defer. We'll defer it. Defer, defer. 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 it. Yes. Um, we'll defer would you it. just quickly summarize these four for Dick so that he knows exactly what we did today on our agenda? Sure. Can you hear us, Dick? Yes. Okay. Um, Dick, you have the agenda in front of you? I'm sorry, what? You have the you have today's agenda in front of you. No, I do not. Okay. Well, uh, under old business, uh, Mary Glensky's uh, proposal. Did he District. vote? Did he vote on that? He, he probably didn't even vote. No, on No, he that. didn't vote on it. I, okay. I didn't hear him anyway. Uh, <laughs> did you hear any part of that? It passed anyway. No, but I know what it's about. Did you vote on it? We did. <laughs> we, we did. Yeah. Well, I've been. Yeah, that's fine. I've, I would support her too. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's well, the that's only. Mary thing. off the hook. She's the cook. <laughs> she's she's had better she... attendance at these meetings than I have. <laughs> <laughs> so we did vote on that one, uh, and that's the only action we we took. Uh, we had one of the proposals withdrawn. Uh, Commissioner Early withdrew his, and uh, uh, then we've got two that have been deferred until our meeting on Friday. Okay. Very good. If I could, uh, well, I assume the minutes, uh, the minutes will be going out soon from this meeting, right? Yes. Make, make sure you ask him. Should we put him down as a yes vote on Mary's? I mean, I know he said he supported it. Sure. I want to make hey, sure for the minutes. Uh, Dick? Yes. We just want to be sure that we've got you on record as a yay vote in support of Mary Glusky's, uh proposal. Yes. It's it's yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, this has been quite a theatrical <laughs> performance here. Wow. Um, I'm sure this makes for some good viewing at home. Yes. Well, I, uh, we're to the point where we're down to new business. Uh, is there any new business on behalf of the uh, uh, commission? Yes, Mary. I'm not really new business, but I did want to say thank you, and it's been a, a rare opportunity to get to know all of you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mary. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I do have a topic that I, I just want to bring up. Uh, if Ms. Owen would come forward, please. Um, I talked a little bit about who can bring amendments for a vote on the charter, mm -hmm. and I know that there's a couple of issues out there, and I really want it cleared up as to when we're done with our work here, we will bring our amendments for a vote. And I think there's a couple of issues you've brought to the council for a charter right. change. There's a couple of issues that the council have discussed in public meetings about whether they want to propose amendments to the, okay. to the charter. There is one moving forward that was also in a public meeting uh, discussed oh, maybe two Mondays ago, requested by Council Member Benega who is um, sponsoring the legislation, but it would be to change the number of signatures for district seats, uh, in part because there's a 200 uh, signature name um, requirement. You have to have 200 valid signatures to be uh, have your name on the ballot, whether it's mayor, at-large council member seats, or the council district seats. And the tricky part is for those who are circulating petitions for council district seats is that if you have four or five people running in that district, for instance, um, you can't each have the same signature. In other words, the one who's signing your petition is nominating you and you alone. And so it's, it can be difficult for those people who need to go door to door. And if they're following the same petitioner, you know, the same uh, candidate who's circulating petitions, they have a hard time getting those 200 names within uh, really pretty much within a calendar month. And, and, and of course, council are part-time. They usually have full-time jobs. So unless they're retired, 
That leaves them nights and weekends. And so I think what the council is proposing by ordinance, and I don't know whether it will be adopted by the council to put that language on the ballot for the people to consider, because of course the council alone can't bring that forward. Uh, the people will always vote on any charter amendment by law. But would be to bring that 200 names down to 50 for those council district seats only, leaving the 200 name requirement for the at-large council district seats and the mayoral. Um, and the reason why they chose to bring it forward at this time, because there's no council members who are running for office, you know, there's no incumbents. Uh, three of the council members are termed. All of the seats are being, uh, that are open are open um, with no incumbents running. And they felt like it was a, a, a good or a, a, a appropriate time to bring forward that. I think that's come to the council or to the Charter Revision Commission before, and I don't think it's been taken up for, for one reason or another. I think even back when Dee Knudsen was first on the, on the uh, um, council, I, I even read some minutes this weekend over, over um, my weekend about some past Charter Revision uh, committees and um, it has, this has never has moved forward for whatever reason and so they're, they're going to bring that in an ordinance of course they'll have to have a vote of the council to adopt it and um, and then if they do then that language would go on the ballot for the people to vote on and is there are there any other discussions none that I'm aware of that are moving forward at this time okay. I guess my question beyond that is I, I the particulars of it don't concern me as much as how will that appear on the ballot does it, does it appear, will all these, with, with these issues, I think, is this the first time this council has brought something for amendment? It, it is, as far as so I'm aware. So will, will it appear on the ballot? I mean, our, what we do as a Charter Revision Commission, we sit here for four years doing it, yeah. and then anybody else, and the, or the council, or city or citizens could bring it forward, will they all just appear in a list? That's a good question. I, I, I would think they would almost need to be delineated that these are being brought forward by the Charter Revision Commission, these are being proposed by the city council. Right. Um, because I think people would want to know that. Mm -hmm. There's no provision in law, certainly that could be at the discretion. I would ask that because um, when I did travel around in 06 when there were charter revision amendments on the ballot, um, that we would continue. I know that there's a, there, last time I think uh, Dick Gregerson had asked that we would put the underscored overstruck version to the voters so they could see the actual language being added and the language being struck. And I would just request that as well. I think on the, in the ordinance that the council has looked at, it would say that it would appear on the ballot as this, and it would have that underscored and, and overstruck. And I do think that helps people understand. Um, because as I went to the voting places, and we did have, we did, at, at Dick Gregerson's request, we did provide um, information with the city attorney's explanation of what was happening with that ballot question, or pardon me, with the charter amendment. But then also, um, we had lots of questions about was this whole section new? And, and it wasn't. Sometimes there was just a few words being changed. Uh, maybe the five years for the fiscal committee, for example, in 5.04. And they just didn't understand. And so I just would ask that you would, um, just we could, you would consider putting uh, the underscored overstruck uh, versions for the public to see so they would know what was being changed. I guess it would be my expectation that we would use the same format we used last time, unless you have any any thoughts on that. Right, and I think there was discussion about that last time, and and the I think in the end, sort of the trump card is that there is, and we did check with the Secretary of State's office on this, that there does need to be the city attorney's explanation, and and for lack of a better term, it almost creates a double negative if you're going to put the underscored overstrike version out there, then you're going to have an explanation. What is the layperson going to understand? Um, and, and ultimately, that is the reason for the city attorney explanation, because if you, if you recall from past elections, it doesn't specify out in detail what happens, but it says the change would essentially, the change would be to change the signatures from requiring 200 to 50. Um, yeah, one of the things, and I think we did this last time, I think we made available the overscore understrike version. I know we did that to the council. I think we also had it available for the public to look at ahead of time. But in that ballot booth, you know, that I think there was some concern. If you give too much information, nobody's going to understand anything. Well, if I could, just because I did travel to all of the polling places on Election Day in 2006, I can tell you the question that I was always asked is what's being changed in the section. 
they wanted to actually read the wording. And that, that was um, done by not, for, not by just, I mean, those who were like very common kind of Joe Public kind of folks who would pull me aside and ask me. And at the request of Dick Gregerson, we did, the clerk's office did prepare um, with your attorney explanation, but then also that overstruck, understruck in a sample language, and we would hand that out. Uh, but then, when, of course, when they compared it to the ballot language, it had the it was different because it had the uh, the markings of where it was being deleted and added to, and so um, it was just you know they were looking to find out what happened. Of course, when you go to peer, it's pretty commonplace. I think it's not certainly um, a legalese to to consider that. I think even citizen legislators know perfectly well if you're if you're striking out language, you're you're deleting it, and if you're underlining it, you're adding it. But um, I was just a request by voters. I I promised several that I would bring it forward. Uh, because I do, I did hear that um, a lot. Thanks. Does the city attorney's explanation include a statement that says a vote yes would, or I mean, that, to me that's one of the most helpful, I think, to voters. And I, and I think at the state level, the attorney general puts the opinion on. Right. There's no over. There's no there's no over right. strikes on that, right. and it's, it's it's his opinion that yes. goes onto the ballot. I, pardon me, Deborah Owen, again. I didn't want to infer that I, that I do believe this, it's important. Of course, the city attorney's opinion must be on there. I just thought it would be helpful in addition to, and I, and I do remember that Dick Gregerson last time had advocated for that, um, uh, to go ahead and leave the, um, the language as it's being altered in effect, but, and then it be accompanied by the city attorney's opinion. Now, obviously, that's critical and I think it's required. So, thank you. And to go back to your uh, question, Commissioner Early. I suppose, and I'm, I need to look at this, but I would guess that whatever the council may approve probably ought to have a city attorney explanation too. I don't. <laughs> that seems odd because the council's passing it, but otherwise I don't know how you explain to the voters what it is that's been proposed. Maybe that in and of itself would the explanation would say, and, and pardon me for sort of thinking out loud here, but. Part of the explanation would say this is a proposal uh, advanced by the city council, uh, wherein they propose a change of this and that and the other thing. And and the other would be this is a proposal by the charter revision commission. Yeah, I think the format would be would be the exact same, um, unless the <coughs> council would have a problem with that. But uh, I don't see. I think you need your opinion on there anytime you're. You're making a change to the charter. Seems to be pretty consistent. I have a question for Deborah. Um, the uh, explanation sheet, I think, would be a good thing. Do the uh, workers at the polls offer that to the voter before the voter goes in the booth? Or you get in the booth and you say, oh, I wish I knew what was being changed here. Um, we did make it available. The clerk's office made it available at libraries, at our community centers mm -hmm. long before, mm -hmm. uh, along with our sample ballots, and made it available online. Okay. Um, where we had issues, and uh, it was on the west end of town, southwest end of town, where we had people who were just struggling with trying to, and they, they had the sheet in their hand, but they were very confused on, was this a whole new section? when they're reading it, because it, obviously there's, some was quite lengthy, mm -hmm. and there was only really very small changes to it, and mm -hmm. so they didn't, they mm -hmm. didn't want to have anything about budgeting, mm -hmm. and so they didn't realize that they were only changing uh, a very small portion, and, mm -hmm. not, and so they were you know, going to vote no against the entire section, and so I had to explain no. You know, if you look here, when it, you're, the mm -hmm. five fiscal years is only what's being added to this language, mm -hmm. and so then they were... It was just an example, but it was it was a lot of confusion. And maybe that's always the case with uh, types of amendments. Uh, just to refer back, I think it was presumed when the council was bringing forward the ordinance, and again, whether or not they ad uh, choose to uh, adopt that or enact that to put that on the ballot language it will will occur in a later meeting. But um, I think it's presumed that the city attorney would write the explanation for all ballot questions, mm -hmm. and I don't think that would ever be in dispute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Question, Sean, is there, um, you, you can't distribute any kind of material at the polling place that would lead a vote one way or another. Or is it limited to you can have a sample ballot? What can you have in the polling place? Could you have information I look at that. I, other than I what the city attorney provides? I think if it's the information that provides both sides of the, the information. It is a good question, though. I'm not sure 
what the limitations are. Because what, what ultimately you would be providing is something that still says, a vote yes does this and a vote no does that. Um, so it's not really leaning to trying to persuade the people one way or the other. But can you have that at a polling place? I'm not sure. I'm not either. And I, and I know it's, it's a very delicate issue there mm -hmm. uh, at a polling place where you, you can't present any kind of information that's going to sway a voter one way or another. And I think that's probably why we have a city attorney or attorney general's opinion is officially what has to be on the ballot. Right. And if I could just to, to um, that all that was on there was it was it, it reiterated all of the ballot uh, or all of the uh, charter amendments that were on the ballot with all of the attorney uh, uh, city attorney's explanations. It just had the changes in the language, the underscored and the overstruck that was that was added to that language that there were people were voting on. It didn't indicate anything more than that, which was simply also in the report that came before the council uh, because, the, because the Charter Revision Commission did include that language in the report to the council. Could we possibly for our next meeting get um, a copy of the ballot that included the changes right. and I then that sheet one. that you had provided? We, not, but we, can, we can try to find one if we have one. I'm not sure that we do. We <laughs> tend to, you know, obviously that it's gone, but it's been a uh, long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We certainly can bring a sample ballot, I think, if we still have that. Oh, we a sample ballot. That. Sure, that would be fine. Um, yeah. well, you could take a look at how that was occurred. Yeah. Um, also, I do think that the city attorney's office brought the language, their explanations to the charter revision for approval by you. Yes, yes. Great. Hope yes. you do that again. I Thank would you. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I'll make a comment here as we talk about these kinds of things. What we decide goes to the city council, not for a vote, but for information. Right, for filing. I wish that what the city council does, or the city city citizens do, would come here for filing. So that we know. I mean, we sat here for four years, mm -hmm. and yet um, you can take a sidetrack and go a different direction and get to the same place. I mean, so really, you, we don't know what the others are doing, but the other know the others know what we're doing. You could. Interesting. You could, you could know what you propose know. that change to the chart. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know. <laughs> well, that was certainly one of the first things that came to my mind when, when uh, Councillor uh, Benega is going through all these. We're begging for people to come talk yes. to us about things they right. want, and it seems to be a pretty straightforward mm -hmm. uh, proposal um, to to go through that channels mm -hmm. is a, interesting to me. Right. But mm -hmm. if the channel's available to him, I guess uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. he, he may do as he pleases. So, unless you want to beat him to the punch and make a recommendation on uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was probably involved if this if this is discussed in prior yeah. charter is I probably was involved in saying no two hundred's okay because we were young, our charter's not very old, mm -hmm. and right. it wasn't time to be, to be right. making those kinds of changes um, whereas you know I can understand as we've gone through where we do. 90, what, five? 94. Four, okay. whatever. I mean, we've got a, yeah. some years uh, mm -hmm. under our belt, mm -hmm. so uh, it probably would be a lot easier now. I'd probably vote against it at some time or another uh, if it was brought to the, sure. <laughs> to the Charter Revision Commission. I was going to ask, isn't this sort of similar, though, to how things occur on the ballot um, statewide? Citizens can bring constitutional amendments. The legislative body can put things on the ballot as well. Or you can we have different types of, of venues, if you will, for the public to vote on um, how they are governed or, or putting things in place. And I think it's kind of fairly parallel to those processes that are available for statewide. Except at the state level, you don't have a specifically appointed commission, commission yeah. to do the very the thing work. that the True. other routes could go. True. And the council does set that up by ordinance, of course. The council actually provides the ordinances in place, to, um, which is in charter, to, um, to establish the commission. So. I don't think they saw it as an adversarial thing at all. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was kind of a, a kind of a, a, a vanilla type amendment. So, thank you. All right. Well, uh, any other new business moving on? Well, just thinking this through, if you're, we're really meeting on the fifth, to have the final report, which is basically just the ballot with the explanations. We better set a meeting for that eighth. Um, I think Dick said he was available the eighth. I think it would be a 15-minute meeting. Um, but okay. over the weekend, we would put everything together, yeah. have it ready for you Monday morning. You would approve it, then we could take it to the council that night. 
May I say something, Lon? Yes, please. Um, just as a point of record, on the December 16, 2008 meeting, Mr. Benega discussed the reducing the number of signatures for petitions with the Charter Revision Commission. This is a matter of record. Okay. What, he, he came here? Mm -hmm. To make a proposal? Oh. <laughs> Benega asked the commission to re consider reducing the number of signatures required for petitions when seeking a district seat on the city council. Discussion followed. At the same time, there was discussed the benefits of staggering terms of city council members. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It's in your official minutes that were approved. Hmm. Sorry, Sean, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's not. I remember that. I, don't, I remember the second yeah. part of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember the second part, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Dick, does February 8th, the morning of February 8th, work too? You didn't hear me. I didn't Dick? I didn't hear you. Dick? Yes. Um, we're talking about reviewing the, uh, reviewing the amendments after our Friday meeting the following Monday, February 8th. Okay. Are you available to do that? Um, Yes. It would be about a 15-minute meeting. Uh, so we'll meet at 1.30 on uh, Friday, and then what time on uh, 8th? Oh, we haven't figured that out yet. Oh, okay. Do we need all of us? Because I won't be here that day. Mm. For which? For February 8th. I won't be here that day. I think we need four votes, don't we? Uh, we'll yes. be voting. The, aren't, aren't we voting? Yeah, but I think what what that, I, thought, I thought all commission members have to be there. To vote on. Uh huh. You only need four votes, but I think they all have to But we're voting on Friday. Isn't the Monday meeting just to. Right, but that's, that's essentially your final report. Oh. But your language. But it's not a. You know, it's approving your language. It's right, it's not voting on the provisions. That, that may work. I'll look at that. I, let's plan it for four or something changes, I'll let you know. I mean, I could be available by phone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for a short meeting like that, we may do that just in case sure. so the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. So the 8th at what time? Like an 8.30 or? 8.30 would be okay. 8.30? Mm-hmm. For me, anyway. Is that okay with Dick? 8.30 on that Monday, Eight. February 8th, Dick? What time? 8.30. In the morning? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, that's fine. And then when will the report go to the city council? That, that night. That night. Yep. Okay. Somebody, and somebody's got to be the presenter. Somebody has to be the presenter. Lon, I think you were up to bat last time. I was, and I'd be glad to share that responsibility with anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll be out of town. It was, it was pretty quick last time, wasn't it? it was... Yeah, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I came in support of you last time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, we'll figure that out. I can do it if. Okay, good. It, good. I've got a line of volunteers beating down my door, so we'll <laughs> yeah. figure that out. Okay. All right. Wow. Move to okay. adjourn. Are we there? We are. I hear a motion to adjourn. Second. Say, uh, let me. I, I appreciate you accommodating me in the phone here. I'm sorry I couldn't hear very well. I think it's a constant roar of the audience here. <laughs> <laughs> They've both been like, moving around a lot. Like watching the Super Bowl. You know? <laughs> all right, we've got a, a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn. <laughs>